But let's talk about Elon and what's going on over there. So Elon Musk obviously keeps proving what an incredible businessman guy he is. Um, and he's doing that by, there's a long game somewhere here, but he's doing that by getting his platform banned in the biggest country in South America. So cool, cool, cool. Um, <laughs> arguably the third largest market in the world. Um, and this happened. So X was recently actually ordered to suspend by a judge, um, after, uh, Elon failed to designate the new legal representative for the country, designate a new legal representative for the country. That's all he had to do. Just pick someone. Just hire a guy. Brazilian Supreme Court Justice Alexandra de Moraes uh, told the National Telecommunications Agency to limit access to X within 24 hours and has given Apple and Google five days to remove X. Um, it also is going to impose daily fines um, to individuals a court, a, about uh, $9,000 <clears> $9,000. <throat> To people who try to access X through a virtual private network VPN, they are not fucking around here. Um, and it seems like they had been warned um, a number of times. So Marais warned Musk he would suspend X in Brazil if the company didn't comply with his order by Thursday. And the ban went into effect Saturday morning. But the judge asked a five member Supreme Court panel to review that decision. In other words, he was like, OK, am I being too rash? I'm going to put this to a five uh, panel, ju uh, five justice panel. And they returned the decision that, yeah, you should ban it. One of the other justices, Flavio Dino, said X seems to believe it's above the law and noted the economic power and size of a bank account do not give rise to outlandish immunity. Now, all of this stems, people, from the fact that Elon Musk has refused to ban seven. That's right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven accounts that have been accused of spreading misinformation. In April, this Justice Moraes announced he was investigating Musk for obstructing obstruction of justice uh, after the billionaire vowed to defy a court order blocking certain accounts on his platform as the officials cracked down on misinformation that was spread on social media. The judge was investigating former President Jair Bolsonaro and his allies for making false claims about the 2022 election, which he lost to Lula, amid a wider investigation into digital militias spreading false and hateful administration. So April came. They were like, you can't defy this. You just got to ban these accounts. He was like, no, tell it to Earth. Buy the Cybertruck. <laughs> and lo and behold, it's September and it's all banned. Now it's gone. Now you're being fined individually for accessing it. There is, look, I, there is part of me that, you know, if I'm supposed to choose, Michael, between like a big gov a government who wants certain accounts banned and a corporation that wants to defend them, I'm usually picking neither side. I just want to put that out there that I think we have a lot to go on like real digital democracy and access. Um, however, if I'm going to choose a side in this one, I'm going to choose, uh, you know, the side of the Brazilian government. And this is someone who said, uh, let me get this straight. The Brazilian government asked must to ban seven accounts. That's it. Instead of banning the seven accounts, he decided to lose Brazil, even though Brazil is the third largest user of Twitter. Musk then exposes the actual names of the seven accounts. What? So he apparently docks the seven accounts, which is like, what? And then finally, before I kick it to you, Michael, Brazilian President Silva told reporters late Monday that the world is not obliged to put up with Musk's far right <clears throat> ideology just because he is rich. I love you, Lula. Viva Lula. Viva Lula. <laughs> but Michael, what do you make of this? And tell me about your experience with um, misinformation online in Brazil. So let me just say that I this is I'm so glad we're talking about this. This is the most important issue, the most important story this year. And I don't mean in terms of the banning of, of X, because that's like an inroad to understanding a larger picture. But what's actually happening, Francesca, is that there is a battle to reframe what is the freedom of speech in the world. And it's being waged by the far right. And Elon Musk is at the forefront of this. And that's why... I totally hear you like, you know, you don't want to ban somebody. You don't want anybody taken off air or whatever. But actually, in this case, we need to understand what the freedom of speech is mm -hmm. and how the United States looks at it and how Brazil looks at it. And these are two different things. So let me just say that and then I'll get into the X question. 
the United States freedom of speech is like almost absolute. You can almost do anything you want to. It's like it is sancti sanctified. It is the most important thing in Brazil because, look, it was a country that recently came out of a 21-year dictatorship, 1985. They're like, sorry, the most important thing for us is democracy. All of the freedoms fit within our democracy, but we're not going to let any one of those freedoms like supersede our ability to actually have like democracy. So for instance, Bolsonaro was banned, was it last year, the year before? He was banned from running for office for the next eight years because he was telling lies about the country's electoral system. Now you don't see the United oh, wait, States. So you I've... actually hold your uh your like wannabe demagogues who spread misinformation accountable, like you prevent them from the ballot box, even if they sicked a massive mob on your country's capital building. That's cool. It is, it's That's a, very cool. It's a, I know it's a shocker. And Brazil has been leading the way. So have the European countries. Brazil has been leading the way. And in particular, this judge, Alexandre Moraes, has been battling fake news. When fake news happened, Bolsonaro was elected in 2018, largely with a massive fake news campaign over social media. I mean, yeah. it was it was crazy. And I remember at the time, Brazilian Supreme Court justices, because here's the way it works, is you have an electoral court, right, that oversees the elections. We don't necessarily have that in the U.S., right? But And that electoral court is overseen by a series of Supreme Court justices. So they kind of go and hang out the electoral court and they go hang out the Supreme Court. Um, they didn't know what to do in 2018. They're like, ah, what are we doing? So they were prepared over the following years. And when 2022 rolls around, they're like, we got this. Mm -hmm. And they have been extremely, extremely strong in battling fake news online, in taking down accounts that are spreading fake news, uh, and, and, and so what you have is Bolsonaro allies and supporters have of course seen this as their, what they call is this is censorship. You're censoring right. us and our ability to spread fake news online. Elon Musk joins this campaign because a, he's crazy far right. B, he doesn't want his business regulated. And don't forget Francesca that, you know, if you look at media, whether that's print or radio or television, all of that is regulated. Every single country has their own communications regulations. Each of these, they have to abide by certain laws. We don't have that for tech and social media platforms right now. So basically Musk at this point is like trying to push as hard as he can get to also make sure that his industry isn't regulated, not just in Brazil, but other places. And why is he doing Brazil? A, because it's a country where he has, you know, okay, fine. Things got shut down a little bit, but he really has nothing to lose. And also B, he has massive support from Bolsonaro allies and particularly Bolsonaro sure. allied politicians. The other thing that's happening in Brazil right now is we are one month out from regional and municipal elections. Mm. And so the more that they can push back on Alexandre Moraes, the Supreme Court justice, remember that the Supreme Court justices are overseeing the elections. If they can push back to make it seem like, oh, they're not going to try and regulate it so much. And that means that the far right can possibly win even more Weasel seats their way in. Better in the local elections. And so all of this is happening right now. Musk knows, A, he's not going to get very far in Europe. Remember, he's not saying shit about China. And he has, and China has, has free speech issues. But if that's because he has his Tesla plants in China. So he's yes. totally playing politics right now. And that's why he's chosen Brazil in particular. Oh, he also chose Venezuela a little bit ago. Of course, he was like crazy active on social media in the days after the Venezuelan Venezuela elections, but particularly in Brazil. And he is hammering so hard right now because he's like, I can do this. This is his activism. This is his world. Right. And so he cares more about this than anything else. And that's why he's willing to hold out for these seven Bolsonaro allied far right politicians. And at the same time as, dude, Twitter, people on the left get knocked out all the time on, in Brazil. But he's not doing this because these guys are far right, like far right politicians, activists online pushing fake news. But they're his people. They're his right. ally. Right. And, and as you mentioned. Yes. Yeah, sorry to cut you off. Uh, and, and you just mentioned that he, you know, he regularly complies with a country like China or we know the UAE or hell Saudi, which apparently is a bunch, Saudi Arabia is heavily invested in X. If they want to purge you know, any dissidents or whomever the hell they want to purge, he's happy to oblige. Um, yep. But again, like you're saying, because he's invested in the Bolsonaro right um, and he, you know, tweets weird psychosexual memes every time Javier Malay of Argentina, again, a Bolsonaro-like figure, speaks, 
yeah and he probably has what i think again like we mentioned before a lot of like you know white colonizer mentality has which is like nah, i'm gonna just fuck with uh, the country in the global south that's fine yeah yeah absolutely no he says i've got the money i can do this i'm gonna play this we're gonna hold out it's fine i was at i just want to mention this real fast i was at cpac brazil um which was in early july in this crazy Wait. far right Clarifying question. Is CPAC Brazil just like um, an extension of CPAC mm -hmm. in the United States that somehow just like was like born anew there? Born anew. It was like this beautiful, oh. So yeah. Eduardo Bolsonaro, who is the son of Jair Bolsonaro, the former president, he's oh, a senator. Another. Uh -huh. And oh no 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 he has four politician sons. Oh Christ! Oh Christ! It, no, it's terrifying. And his wife is is I think running for local office. She actually Michelle Bolsonaro actually might do. She might win some positions. Some people are saying that she might be the presidential candidate, like instead of Bolsonaro, because he can't run over the next election. But regardless, Eduardo Bolsonaro, he uh, is like after Jair Bolsonaro, he's probably the most important far right politician in the country, and he's been he's traveled for a long time. He is friends and close allies with um, Steve Bannon. And in fact, Bannon, back in 2018, when they met, Bannon invited him to be like his Latin American representative for the movement, Bannon's like far right movement thing. Yeah. So Eduardo Bolsonaro, he's like, he's like the mover and the shaker for the Brazilian far right. And he was the one who brought CPAC Brazil to Brazil in 2019. So it's been growing every year since. It's totally modeled after the United States. And they, in fact, they brought... A bunch of people who had like, there's actually, a C, there's like other CPAC, but there was no Tucker, but there was Millet and mm -hmm. Bolsonaro on stage. Uh, and, you know, and a bunch of other representatives, somebody came from the Bukele government, far right politicians came from Peru, from Chile, from Colombia. So the whole idea is that there is this larger movement. It's this platform that they're trying to use to kind of organize and position themselves. And the main thing that so many people were talking about is how, because the discourse on, on the Bolsonaro allies and the far right in Brazil is that right now under Lula, it's a dictatorship. And that it's all because of this judge, Alexandre Moraes, who has been attacking free speech and of course has locked people up. Why? Because they invaded the Brazilian capital, kind of like what happened in the US capital, yes, except they did. for the fact that in the United, in Brazil, they actually took action and people were jailed and people have been held responsible. So that's the thing is that you have the court system that's actually taking action in a way that we never, we've never seen in the United States. I mean, uh, and that's, that's the difference. That's why Brazil is so key. I think that's fascinating. And, and, and it is a beautiful model. And I, and I, and just like, I think your passion for Latin America, my passion for Latin America really lies in the fact that Latin America is actually so much farther along and forward thinking. And, and truly, I mean, when you talk about a country and many countries in Latin America that have forged their, their democracies by via, uh, sh you know, shirking and finally getting rid of a dictatorship that was propped up by so many international actors. Like this is a democracy they live every day. This is a democracy that people are very conscious of. Sadly, in this country, we do kind of take it for granted, right? Yeah. Um, for for better and for a, a lot of worse. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you, you draw a corollary for me. I think of you know the Biden administration trying to set up a misinformation, you know, uh, bureau basically, so just kind of just to investigate misinformation online and it got immediately shut down because yeah. the right freaked out about it and mm -hmm. so they just you know were like oh sorry oh god oh god oh god don't talk about it anymore we, we won't look into misinformation and 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 it's true like i am wary of big government influence because under the wrong hands right like right. what does if bolsonaro comes back you know what happens but by the same token you do you cannot rely on business to self-regulate we know right. that there, it, that's an impossibility. And that in this country is what we've done. We relied on Mark Zuckerberg being like, oh, gee, well, things got a little crazy on uh, January 6th. I guess I should uh, wrap up uh, all the political uh, ads on Meta. And you're like, no, that's not the solution. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, well, I appreciate you digging into that. So, I mean, do you think, like, what's the play here? Is Elon just going to be like, okay, I'll take the hit financially? So a yeah, he doesn't care like that's right. like this this is about politics for him and so I think that he will hold out as long as he can hold out he mm -hmm. has to try and transform this into a victory somehow or another 
um, or he holds out for long enough and then as a way to help his people kind of continue to organize ahead of these elections. So it's, it's, it's hard. I don't, I don't know how this, I don't know how this gets resolved. He definitely wants to make it seem, and here's, what's been interesting is that more and more you have, this has been organized. It's been helping the far right to organize. And this mm -hmm. is an organizing tool. And he realizes that everybody, they're all, they all know what's right. Going on. Cause they're embattled. So it's like grievance politics. Oh, we're being right. these seven accounts to the barricades. Right. Exactly. And remember like, Many people, there's a certain percentage of the country, just like in the United States, that thought that Donald Trump had actually won the elections the last round. There are is a certain percentage of the country in Brazil that actually thought the Bolsonaro won. Remember, they hit the streets. They had yes, massive protests. That's why they did the whole like occupation thing and, and the invasion of the capital. And so those people actually do believe that this is this is a dictatorship, not Bolsonaro is a dictatorship. And so this is like the polarization of the misinformation. And so this is all playing into that. And so obviously this is happening now. The more that they can do that, it helps the far right to kind of organize and feel the victims and then hopefully get out and vote harder in these regional elections. Um, obviously, Musk is going to want his Twitter to be working by then, and they're going to want that to be on board ahead of the elections. You have 22 million people in Brazil that are Twitter users. It's only 10% of the, of the population. 80 Over 80% of the population uses WhatsApp. So Twitter is not a major social media and compared with like the United States where you have over a hundred million people who are using Twitter. It's not that huge in Brazil, but still they're going to want that online ahead of the elections. Yes. But how this happens and how Musk plays into this or like, you know, says, Oh, fine. Like he was really, many people were, were holding out or he was hoping that the Supreme court might say, Oh, we don't, we're not going to go along with Alexander Mordais, but, but you already had the Supreme court that ruled that. No, we're, we're, we're going to continue with this well, ban. He can't panel come in and say, is that the so panel that of yesterday. justices? That, That's right. right. So they, they've already voted and they voted uh, to support the ban because we're talking about Brazilian democracy. At the end of the day, this is the constitution versus this random guy who happens to own this tech company. Um, yeah. And so the Supreme Court, now the Supreme Court will, can, might sometimes can go down ideological lines, but the, the, the Supreme Court right now, like the guys who voted first, uh, two of them were individuals that were appointed by Lula. Then you had Alexander Mordais. You have other people that are on board too. So this is obviously go, going to go the, the path it should go in defense of the country's democracy. But how this thing gets played out over the coming days or in the coming weeks, or is Musk just going to hand in the towel? I don't know. That's a whole other question. Final, final question. I should have clarified this earlier. You said some of the, the, the of the seven accounts, some are actual politicians. Are they running? And it... Um, in this election? That I don't know. I don't uh -huh. know. I don't, I, I don't have their names. I don't know if they're running. I know that they're, they're, they are largely far right politicians who have been spreading fake news online, but yeah. I haven't done enough research to look at exactly who they are and if they're Well, running. we're learning about it. I mean, we'll see what happens obviously before the election, yeah. but uh, it's just fascinating. And I, and it's, it, it is, I think a model to be like, you don't just have to like roll over, right? Um, and again, I think the percentage of people who are actually even on Twitter in Brazil is important or important to keep in mind. Um, yeah. But Michael Fox, please, please go ahead. I'll just say one one last thing. Yes. Uh, Glenn Greenwald. Glenn Greenwald. Greenwald, who, yes, it's Glenn. <laughs> Glenn Greenwald. Glenn Glenn, who was kind of the you know of, of course like investigative reporter was really important in helping Lula come back to power, and then he kind of flipped the switch and went. A wall and went all crazy far right. Yes. So he has been participating in this whole debate and he's been like releasing these documents saying that, oh, well, I have documents that show Alexandre Moraes has been uh, going against the rules of the constitution. But again, he is also a, a free speech absolutist. So he yeah. believes that free speech is uh, above everything else, just like Elon Musk. And I think it's, I think it's interesting how he's trying to like sway the debate in support of Bolsonaro and his people and in support of his like free speech absolutism uh, and, and doing this from this point of view of like, oh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a gringo who lives in Brazil and I can say yeah, in a in a at... compound with armed guards like come on <laughs> spare me like that dude has just i'm i'm so disgusted by that human being and he is so bad faith and this guy 
makes a living off of being a contrarian. That's all it is. And gee, what do all these people have in common? They're all like straight cis white guys with a fuck ton of money and got paid way too much by the intercept. Um, I saw those, I saw the leaked salaries. God damn it. Um, meanwhile, <laughs> Michael Fox out here doing the good work, doing the real independent reporting. Um, you know, despite being a gringo, we, his, uh, you know, intentions are good. What's going on, Frantifa? If you haven't already, subscribe to this channel right now. Hit that button. And also, you can become a patron and support the show every single week. Get access to bonus episodes and exclusive merchandise. Patreon.com slash Bituation Room. Do it.